show you how to make homemade English muffins that are so much better than store-bought. I know what you're thinking, but Natasha, those are so cheap and easy to buy. I'm telling you, once you try homemade, you won't want to go back. And I'm going to show you all of our tricks to getting those perfect nooks and crannies. These are just the softest English muffins. And I'm craving some, so let's get started. Start by heating up some whole milk, either in the microwave or in a saucepan. And I like to get that to about 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, add some unsalted butter and some honey and stir that together until the butter and honey are melted. Now we're gonna activate the yeast and it's important to make sure your milk mixture isn't too hot or you'll kill the yeast. Always check with a thermometer and I will link to the one I'm using in the notes. Ideally, it should be between 110 and 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Stir in your active dry yeast until it's incorporated, then let it sit and rest for about 7 to 10 minutes to activate your yeast. <laughs> now we're going to add the dry ingredients to the bowl of a stand mixer. I'm using a combination of bread flour and a little bit of whole wheat flour for color and flavor. Also add fine sea salt, then stir everything until it's combined. Once the yeast is activated, you'll see foamy bubbles form at the top. So go ahead and add that yeast mixture into your flour mixture. Now beat that together with the paddle attachment on speed two for about eight to 10 minutes, scraping down the bowl a few times as you mix. You wanna make sure to catch any stray bits of flour on the sides of the bowl. After eight minutes, you should still have a very wet looking dough and this is totally normal for English muffin dough. As you can see, the dough is still very wet and quite sticky. Generously oil a large mixing bowl and transfer all of the dough into the bowl. Roll the dough around in the oiled bowl just to make sure it's not sticking to the bowl. It should move freely. Cover the dough with a dry kitchen towel and let that rise in a warm spot, ideally around 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and you want it to double in size. This can take about two hours depending on the temperature of your space. The dough has puffed up beautifully. Next, we're gonna line a baking sheet with parchment paper. This is where we'll set our cutout English muffins. To prevent sticking, brush the parchment paper with oil, then dust generously with finely ground cornmeal or semolina flour. The semolina or cornmeal helps to create that classic crust on an English muffin. Set that aside and generously dust a clean work surface with flour. Invert your risen dough over the floured surface and use your fingers to gently spread it into a half inch thickness. Make sure you don't pat it down too thinly or your English muffins will be a little flat. I'm using a three inch round cutter to cut out my English muffins. To keep it from sticking to the dough, you wanna dip it into flour between each cut. Also, just like when you're cutting into biscuits, cut straight down once you're at the bottom, then you can shift side to side to make sure you cut all the way through. Now lift your cutout muffin, use a spatula if you need to, and transfer it to your prepared pan. Continue cutting out the rest of your muffins, dipping in flour as you go, and keep the cuts as close together as possible. Once you've cut out as many as you can, pull the scraps together and cut out another one to two muffins. These typically aren't as pretty as your other English muffins, but they will be just as delicious. Sprinkle the tops with a little more semolina or fine cornmeal, because again, we love to have that great crust on the English muffins. Cover those with a clean kitchen towel and let them rest at room temperature for about 20 minutes to lightly puff. If you're making these ahead, at this point you can cover with an oiled sheet of parchment paper, then a sheet of plastic wrap, and refrigerate overnight for fresh English muffins in the morning. Set the English muffins on a dry cast iron skillet over low heat. Cover with a lid and cook until the bottom is golden brown. This takes about six to seven minutes. For more even browning, you can rotate them in the pan as they cook. Once they have puffed and browned on the first side, flip them over and continue cooking for another five minutes uncovered. They're done when both sides are golden brown and if you wanna double check for doneness, insert an instant read thermometer into the center of the English muffin and it should read 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Repeat the process cooking the remaining English muffins. Once they're done cooking, transfer to a wire rack and cool to room temperature. 
<laughs> oh my goodness. These are just incredible. I really hope you try this recipe. It'll change the way you look at English muffins. I'm telling you. All right. And then once they're cooled down, you don't want to, as with any bread product, you don't want to cut into it while it's still hot because then the center becomes kind of gummy. So you want to let it cool at least till it's just barely warm. And then this is how you open an English muffin. Okay. There is a proper way to do this. So watch closely. It's actually really easy. Don't worry. <laughs> All right, so you just take a fork and with the tines of the fork, you're going to pierce into it and try to reach to like the center of the muffin. You're kind of cutting through it with the fork. And this is the best way to see those nooks and crannies that everybody loves about English muffins. I mean, you could just cut through it with a serrated knife, but you would spoil all the fun. <laughs> and it's not proper, so just kidding. I wouldn't judge you because I do that all the time when I'm being a little bit lazy or in a hurry. Okay, so now that I've gone all the way around with the fork, you're just going to use your fingers to pry it apart and it comes apart super, super easy. Look at those nooks and crannies, baby. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> This is just as good as it should look. It's amazing. Look at that. Super soft. The texture is so good. Oh, I cannot wait to just chomp this down. And when they're fresh like this, you know how when you get English muffins from the store, you have to toast them because they're kind of like cardboard? Well, when you make them from scratch, like they will stay soft for several days if you keep them at room temperature and you don't even have to toast them. They are that good. I'm telling you, these will change the way you look at English muffins. Okay, so what we're gonna do for the taste test, because we have to do a taste test, is just a little bit of good quality salted butter. All right, and just put that right on there. They're still a little bit warm. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I am so happy right now. Okay, just gonna go for this. Mm, hold me. The texture is phenomenal. They are so soft and airy and wonderful, but kind of dangerous because admittedly, I could eat like two or three of these in a row, which you can't really do that with the store-bought ones because this is so good. Okay, and then the other half, I'm gonna put some jam on it because oop, the taste test continues and this is only pretty colored one that I had in my fridge <laughs> and it's marmalade. Let me know if you are a marmalade fan, if you're with me on that. It's kind of a unique flavor. My late boss, Pearl, introduced me to that and I kind of fell in love with it. So <laughs> come to mama. Mm. <laughs> Seriously though, what I love about English muffins is they're so versatile. You can have them for breakfast. You can make breakfast sandwiches, but this is just... <laughs> Make them once, you'll make them again and again. You'll love that they're make ahead, freezer friendly, as English muffins are. And seriously though, they keep really well and soft for a few days at room temperature. So just put them in an airtight container or a zippy bag, take out all the air and they stay soft and just so good. Homemade, homemade is so worth it. I hope you guys love this recipe. Also, you can find more great baking recipes in our new cookbook if you haven't already ordered this. I will leave a link in the notes and uh, let me know if you guys have any recipe requests in the new year. If there's anything that you really wanna learn how to make, let me know. And also let me know where you spotted Sharky and we'll see you in the next episode of Natasha's Kitchen. Okay, I need some more marmalade. <laughs> My husband's eyeing these too. I can see him over there behind the camera. <laughs> He's actually called this great big ginormous ginormo. <laughs> these ugly scrap ones are just as good. I don't know, I might even like them a little better because you can kind of like pull off chunks of them. They're so airy and lovely. Just as good, just a little ugly. <laughs> we don't mind. <laughs>